Hi, welcome to another episode of the Quarantine Doodle Club. Uh, yesterday during a live uh, drawing video, I had a request from Lily to do a Brachiosaurus. So today we're going to do just that. Um, Lily wants to be a paleontologist when she grows up, which I fully support. Uh, when I was in first grade, I could tell you all kinds of facts about every kind of dinosaur. Now not so much, but I wish I still could. I, I still enjoy dinosaurs. I think they're really cool. Uh, so Lily, this episode's for you and I hope you enjoy. Uh, grab some paper, a pencil, and let's get down to it. Oh, don't forget, uh, when you're finished, you've got yourself a coloring page, color it in. It'll take a little bit longer. You'll be thrilled that you managed to take up some more time out of the day, and your parents will be even happier. So parents, you're welcome. All right, so today we're going to draw a Brachiosaurus. Um, I don't have the copyright use for the Jurassic Park theme, but I would highly recommend if you've got Spotify or even if you want to look it up on YouTube, have the Jurassic Park theme playing in the background to really add to this. Um, so to start off the Brachiosaurus, I'm making sort of a rainbow shape. And then I'm going to make the letter C connected to that. Now this is going to be the top of the Brachiosaurus head. This is going to be its mouth area. Uh, then before we do any detail on the face, let's go ahead and make the neck. Let me just figure out where the bottom needs to be. All right. Most of the Brachiosaurus's body is going to be neck. So I'm going to come down to about here. I would have liked to have gone even further. Actually, let me see. If I push this way up here, if I can bring it down a little bit further and still fit everything in the frame. All right, next I'm going to do the back of the neck. So this line is just going to run pretty much parallel to the first one until we start getting down to the lower part of the neck. And then it'll split out a little bit more. Um, the front part of the neck I'm going to have come down a bit more. That'll start to get into the chest area. Then I'm going to start its back. A Brachiosaurus has a very downward sloping back. Um, its front legs are a lot longer than its hind legs. Uh, next I'm going to start the front leg. So we'll give it a shoulder area like this. That's basically a parenthesis right there. And then two lines, and I see I'm getting close to the bottom of your screen. So I have to be careful here. Um, I was going to put this Brachiosaurus in tall grass, so I'm just going to do part of the bottom of the leg. And since I'm running out of screen space, um, I guess my grass will be very tall. So I'm going to scribble in some grass here. Um, next, we want this chest area to come all the way to the leg. And then I'm going to make the front leg here so it's going to be a bit like this. And they have pretty stocky, almost like elephant legs, but a little bit stockier than that. They had a lot of weight to be holding up, so they have very sturdy, um, very thick, sturdy legs. I saw a documentary a couple years ago. Um, I think it was actually on the History Channel. But it was they talked about uh, dinosaurs and giants, and they believe... Um, a lot of paleontologists and archaeologists agree, uh, excuse me, paleontologists and anthropologists agree that um, the mythology of giants across cultures was probably that um, different cultures had found dinosaur bones. Um, so a lot of places where giant myths are very common are also places where you can find dinosaur bones. Um, and they believe that these people had found giant thigh bones and stuff that looked like human thigh bones. 
but were much larger. And to make sense of that, they came up with these tales of giant people, which I think is pretty cool that it's such a logical explanation for why so many cultures have giant stories. Makes sense. Um, then it needs another leg back here. So you definitely want your Brachiosaurus to have all four legs. Um, and for the tail, I'm going to make it so that the tail has already curved away a little bit and is kind of curving back. So you're not going to, it's not going to be quite as long as you're expecting because part of it has already curved away from the screen. Um, so I'm going to go like this and it's going, basically just don't draw it straight as an arrow. And then this one's going to be gradually getting closer to becoming a tip like that, the point. Boy, I just barely fit all that in. That was kind of lucky. Uh, and then we can make some more tall grasses. And I still need to give it some facial features. I'm going to make a couple of close lines here, almost like a brow line, like where humans have eyebrows. Then we're going to give it its eye socket area. Brachiosaurus have pretty defined eye socket areas. Uh, so I made, that's basically a slightly pointed backwards letter C. And then in here we're going to do a slight rainbow shape. And then the same shape but upside down. And then I'm going to put a small pupil inside of that. I don't want to overdo it. Um, and then for the mouth, I'm going to, it's not going to be a straight line across. I'm coming up slightly right here. And then I'm going to go down slightly right here. So that's kind of a rainbow shape. Now I'm going to wiggle back up. So now it's a U shape. And then we're going to go back to a rainbow shape. So rather than just go straight across, we gave it a slightly more realistic and interesting mouth. Uh, and then if you want, you can give it a bit of a jawbone right here. And I believe the nostril is going to be way up at the top here. And then if you want, you can make a few, whoops. <laughs> you you want it more that line. Ignore that part right there. Um, and a couple lines that kind of run parallel to the front of the neck. And maybe another one like that. Probably don't need too much here. Just a little bit. And then if you want to give a few sort of wrinkles at the bottom of the neck. Um, I'm not sure... I mean, these were reptiles, but they're very, they're built sort of similar to an elephant. And to me, it's kind of hard to picture these giant dinosaurs not being elephant-like. So I'm, I'm adding in some more wrinkles back here in places that an elephant would have them, which may or may not be accurate. Um, but just knowing how an, <clears throat> how an elephant's skin uh, reacts to having all that all that weight, um, it's it's fairly plausible that a Brachiosaurus's skin would be equally wrinkly. All right, here is our finished Brachiosaurus for my future paleontologist friend, Lily. Lily, I hope it's what you were picturing. I hope you enjoyed following along. Uh, if you wanted something else, don't, don't hesitate to send a message. I will try to fix it in the future. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to tune in for another episode of the Quarantine Doodle Club.